Welcome back to the table everyone. Today we're going to play some lock and load tactical as the camera tries to stabilize down and we're doing the east front this time around. So this is Heroes of the Motherland. We're going to do scenario one. I'm going to retitle this one basically relearning how to play lock and load tactical. I haven't played this for uh, months. I've played on the computer and the nice thing is the computer, you know, tracks all the rules and everything for you and you just kind of, uh, you know, play, if you will. But, you know, when you get back to the, the hex and map, just because you've been playing on the computer, you don't always get to see all of the dice rolls and everything, you know, unless you, like, really pay attention, don't advance. But, yeah, it's, it's hard, really, I think, to transfer that computer knowledge to the board game. Uh, vice versa, when I first started playing on the computer game, I felt pretty good what I was, you know, knew what I was doing because I had been playing the, the board game. So anyway, coming back to the board game now, it's kind of like, oh, the computer's not calculating things for me. So starting over, if you will. And I was reading on some forum posts uh, on like Facebook and whatnot that I've come to the realization that with the game, different people can read the rules, but yet come away with a completely different understanding on some concepts. And I thought to myself, yeah, there's a lot of nuances in the game. And the game itself, when you look at a lot of the rules individually, it's not, not so much that it's an overly complicated game. It's just that, depending on what you're doing, there could be a lot of moving pieces. So I can see how, for a new learner, it very well can seem very intimidating, especially if it's someone who wants to make sure they have a thorough understanding of the rules before they start. And I thought to myself, well, there's got to be an easier way to learn the game. There's tutorials that you can see on YouTube. There's a really extensive infantry how to play in the in the rule book. Like you can download the rules for free, and there's just uh, there still can seem to be a lot there. And I thought, well, how do we strip the game down to its most basic elements to kind of learn how to play? And I think I've come up with a way. It, it's working for me to kind of get back into the swing of things. So let me explain what I'm doing. And you can probably maybe see that a little bit here. But uh, let's take a look at this scenario first. And then you can kind of see what my setup is here. Okay, so we're doing tough as nails. That's the first scenario in the book once you get past the special rules for the module rules. So Stalingrad, Russia, September 21st. 1942. Oh, uh, my wedding anniversary is the 21st, so thank you, Stalingrad. After a few initial setbacks, German forces were making steady progress towards clearing the city of Soviet troops. On September 20th, a German infantry assault was repulsed around the building known as the Nail Factory by stalwart elements of the newly arrived 13th Guards Division. The German command was nonplussed and the attack was renewed the next day this time with armor and pioneer attachments. Excellent. So the Soviets order a battle. It's elements of the 42nd Infantry Regiment, 13th Guards Division. They set up first. They're getting like three 2246s, three 2245s, sniper, three DP-28s, Lieutenant Filatov, Filatov, maybe Lieutenant Petrov with fanatic skill. Satchel charge, 12.7 millimeter medium machine gun, a 45 millimeter anti-tank gun, ambush skill, and two Molotov cocktails. Then the Germans are bringing elements of the 518th Infantry Regiment, 295th Infantry Division, with attached armor from the 24th Panzer Regiment. So they're bringing seven 1645s, two 1646s, two MG34s, one 7.92 medium machine gun, one 75. Um, it's like a infantry gun. I don't remember what the LE stands for, like leg, but it's basically an infantry howitzer they push around. A medic, Lieutenant Plasman, Sergeant Bowman, or Bowman with diehard skill. Sergeant Beck, two, two, three, four, six squads, one, two, three, four, five squad, uh, one flamethrower, one satchel charge, one Panzer 3J, and one Stug 3G, the Stug Life. Excellent. So we'll be playing on maps 49, and I have the camera zoomed in for the moment, but it's maps 49 with 46B set up that way. It's going to be 10 turns long. The Germans have the initiative. Victory conditions. German player wins if he controls, uh, controls as in 
touch them. Keep anybody else from touching them. All hexes of building 49I3, which is at the top of the map that's not on the camera currently. So if I just gently shove the camera around, it's basically these sections there. That's pretty much it. There are special snare rules for the Pioneers, the Sniper, the ATG, Ambush, Rubble Wreck, two-story buildings, building markers. All right, so let me tell you what I really like about this scenario. Uh, one, this gives you a lot of things to play with to try out a lot of different rules. There are special snare rules in here for fire, which is great for the flamethrower. You're going to need to know a little bit about um, ordnance weapon firing to take care of the tanks, the anti-tank guns, because uh, the uh, tanks is the you know second section of the rules. First is mostly infantry, then you add on tanks. Uh, let's see. Then there's machine guns, leaders. Uh, the sniper, a medic for the Germans, right? So there's actually a lot of lot of things for a first scenario. So here's what I did. I kept just the infantry and the leaders. And again, kind of go back to that idea of let's just start learning the basics. And what greater way to learn the game by focusing on just a few things. Now, what I'm telling you is probably not groundbreaking, and a lot of you probably do. It's just that when I've read some of the comments on like the Facebook and other places, it seems like people don't even want to play until they've read the rules, and they think they have the rules mastered. And that's fine. I think that's fine. But what might be a great way to just kind of learn is those things that you're reading is play with one element add another element, add another element from the rules, and if that means playing the same scenario multiple times, you're still reading all of the rules, and you'll still apply every rule that you're reading about, but this will let you play the game, and then slowly layer on more rules to give you that much more depth. And I understand that by stripping away the anti-tank guns, flamethrowers, satchel charges, all that stuff, the points and balance of the game are totally wrecked. Obviously, this was built to be played a certain way, and that's what you're going to build to, which means you can play this scenario multiple times. After I've played this scenario and feel comfortable with the basics of moving and shooting, you know, next time I play, I might say, okay, let me add in a machine gun. But even then, you can go a little bit slower. Because sometimes there's things you can do, like uh, possibly low crawling and 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 some other special movement rules that you might be able to apply that you're not using now. Spotting seems to come up often. Uh, you know, spotting is a bit of a headache. So that's what I'm coming at from the point of view on this particular little segment of playthrough is just start with the very very basics and then slowly add in more. So that means if I got to play this scenario four or five times before I can comfortably include tanks and the machine guns and all those things, so be it. You know, the thing is you can modify your setup. This game doesn't say where the different people have to place. It just says Germans place anywhere on 46B, Soviet player places everything on 49. So you don't have to keep the same layout, especially as you start to add more elements like the tank or the anti-tank gun. You might shift things around a bit. So I thought I would share that. That was my thinking and reasoning behind my relearning of Lock and Load Tactical is strip away as many elements that you can and play the most basic that you can to try and get down you know, some of the basic math on shooting, firing, those basic mechanics for moving, casualties, reductions, and things of that nature. And then once you've played that, then say, okay, I'm going to come back and this time I'll play with the medic. I'll add in a medic and then play the game again with that. And since you want to play a lot of games of lock and load tactical anyway, if you're playing the same scenario, but you keep adding elements, you're kind of playing a different scenario each time. So who cares if you're not playing all of the games yet? Because I feel that with confidence, once you can employ all the elements from this first scenario, there really doesn't leave a whole lot of extra, except maybe, I haven't looked at all the scenarios, but then you can start looking for some obscure stuff. Maybe there's sewer movement rules. I don't know. Uh, you maybe have at some point artillery or some airstrikes, 
but you'll have so many of the basics covered that you'll be adding in advanced elements and not necessarily worrying about tweaking with all the little things. That's my hope. I could be wrong, but that's how I'm going to approach my relearning of Lock and Low Tactical is start with just a bit. See, like, I could have even taken away the infantry or the, uh, the leaders and left the leaders off. But leaders are pretty important, so I felt I need leaders and just the infantry, no smoke laying or anything like that. That is one of the scenario rules is pioneers and smoke. So maybe if I play again, that would be the next thing I add is my engineers can lay smoke because uh, to move up and advance on some of these buildings, I, I would have liked smoke. I've already played this way once, but I'm going to play it again for you uh, just to kind of go through my thought process. I have a different setup. You, you didn't see it before, but I thought, you know, I'm going to share this method with folks just to see if that will help encourage people to go ahead and just play with what you know. And don't worry about all of the rules you don't know yet. But there's a lot, and it will make your gameplay very robust at some point. But I think it's important that, you know, give yourself a chance to play, enjoy the system, and I think you'll find yourself playing more often if you just start slow. All right, I'm going to pause that video here. This will be just a separate upload from the main game because uh, I think I introduced and gave my thought process a little longer than I thought. So the second video that you'll see to this will be actually playing the game since we've set aside all of the my reasonings behind what I'm doing. So we'll see you back when the game is live. Well, recorded, but you know.